today's teenagers, believing in love without cost, in freedom without responsibility. Look into their faces and you'll see the child that still remains. But now our children are playing grown-up games. Living in a society soaked in sex where passion is a prime time preoccupation, 11 million teenagers are trying it for themselves. And children are having children. A lot of my friends became sexually active when they were 14 or 15. I was about 16 the first time. Um, my friends were about 15, 17. Kids are probably about 16 years old. That's the majority of them. I was younger. I was 14. With one million teenage pregnancies a year, news reports are calling it an epidemic. But that's not true. More than half the pregnant girls are 18 or 19, and many of them are married. But militant family planning groups are using statistics to sound an alarm as they work to put birth control clinics in schools across our land. Their campaign is why 12-year-old girls today can receive free birth control pills between classes without a word to their parents. The school is not raising my child. They are not, in, should not be in control of my child's health or well-being beyond, you know, the realm of educating bringing to her reading, writing, and arithmetic, per se. Um, the idea that they would interfere with her moral upbringing or her physical well-being over a long period of time scares me to death. In 1973, one of the first birth control clinics opened in a school in St. Paul, Minnesota. But with its only focus on family planning, students were too embarrassed to walk through the door. Their lesson learned. Today in Baltimore, Chicago, Phoenix, and more than 50 other cities, school-based clinics offer drug abuse counseling, dental care, immunizations. But their real business is birth control. School-based clinics continue to encourage the adolescent into sexuality. It's not that the promulgators of school-based clinics have the attitude, encourage these kids to say no. It's entirely opposite. Anyone who comes in, even for a Band-Aid, is evaluated before being seen. And no matter what the child's problem, he or she is asked about sex. If they hint that sex is or soon will be a part of their life, the push to use contraceptives begins. What we're really saying to them is now you don't have to be afraid of the consequences. Your actions no longer have a consequence. So you use this birth control method and will guarantee that you won't get pregnant. Well, I don't know of any form of birth control except abstinence that's 100% foolproof. Behind their parents' backs, birth control pills are given to girls. Packets of condoms handed to boys. Often, all parents know is they've signed a blanket consent for free medical care. But buried in the long list of services, you'll see birth control. Even if parents request that their child not receive contraceptives, in many states, the clinic has the right to give them anyway to children between 12 and 18. There is a tremendous pressure all around you, right down to the advertisement of cigarettes, to engage in sexuality. And adolescents are have a tenuous enough sense of self-esteem so that if they're not doing what everybody else is doing, they feel strange and they feel left out. Um, there would be a drive into sexuality in adolescence anyway. Um, the challenge again would be to encourage conservative behavior. I think that the majority of our adolescent population is not sexually involved. And I think that they're hearing too much about those that are. And they're feeling as if they're different. They're the odd man out. And that's not the case. Actually, the greatest majority are not involved in a relationship. And they need to know that it's all right to say no to sexual relationships. I don't think that there's been a better time in history for them to say no than truly with the um, epidemic of sexually transmitted diseases and AIDS. 
Even if they're using birth control, one out of every three teenagers becomes pregnant anyway. Then, the clinics make referrals for abortions. Still, the parents are kept in the dark, and girls little more than children suffer through an experience even adults find emotionally devastating. The scars can last a lifetime and prevent a girl from ever becoming pregnant again. The first time I got pregnant, um, I was scared. I, was, I had just really started 16, and it was only a couple months, and I was really scared. I wanted to keep the baby. I really did. But my boyfriend at the time was, well, we got to have an abortion. We got to do this. And being scared, I, okay, I let myself d go and do it. And it was, it was horrible. <laughs> it really was. What makes abortion particularly painful, particularly difficult, is that abortion is the intentional destruction of human life. All other death experiences generally that we go through are not intentional. And while the plight of the woman with an unwanted pregnancy, we must be sensitive to her pain and her shame and her anxiety and her fears, an abortion does nothing but compound the problem. It burdens her with the psychological damage, the after effects that can last for decades. Although you'll find the clinics inside schools, outsiders run them. School administrators can't even see the clinic's records. Sometimes, a child coming in for birth control doesn't even see a doctor. The doctor's commitments on the clinic uh, grounds are not um, clearly stated. Dr. Long, who will be serving the clinic in my area, should it go in, says he'll only be on campus maybe eight, ten hours a week. You can't tell if it's that one day a week for eight hours. Is that five days a week for only two hours? So I don't feel that that's comprehensive health care, you know, quality enough to diagnose and prescribe on an individual basis. Who's responsible if a school-based clinic refers a 13-year-old girl for an abortion and complications develop? Or if a child suffers a stroke while on the pill? Or if a boy given contraceptive counseling contracts AIDS? It takes $250,000 to set up a school-based clinic. And with the help of abortion advocates, family planners, and private foundations, that money's not hard to find. But look a few years ahead, and you'll see your taxes paying for children's birth control. About $100 per child each year. I don't give money to things that I don't believe in. And, and when I think that they're just going to automatically, as soon as they run out of the funding from these companies, start to take my tax dollar and use it in a school to promote sex. I'm sorry, I, I disagree with that and I, and I take a stand and I don't think it's right. And particularly because they are not informing us that they're gonna do that. In the low income neighborhoods where you usually find school-based clinics, free medical care can seem like a gift from God. But every school has a nurse to take care of the children and there are other clinics nearby. Near San Fernando High School, there are two clinics within walking distance of that campus itself. There are five within the community. Most are free or low cost to a student. When one considers the fact that a student by law, by state and federal law, is able to leave school without parental consent or knowledge for confidential medical care, which would be receiving condoms, contraceptives, and abortion, to bring this onto campus um, presents a, a real problem and it's unnecessary, I believe. After 